In this video we're going to talk about how to interpret what the markings on a tyre wall are and also I'll give you one piece of advice which can potentially save you tens of thousands of pounds. So let's get into it. So in terms of a standard tyre, uh, there are many markings around the uh, wall of a standard tyre and we'll go through them one by one. Now the first one of course is the brand of the tyre. This is a Michelin and this is considered a premium tyre. Now, as with a lot of products in the market, there are premium, there are sub-premium, there are um, what you would call mid-price, then there are value tyres as well. And Michelin certainly is a premium in the market, and we'll talk about uh, sub-premium and, and value tyres later on uh, in the video. So the first marking, which probably you're most familiar with, is the tyre size. Just one thing I'd like to ask you, at this point, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be very much appreciated. Um, the reason being, it really does help the channel and also helps spread the video as well. Now, if at a later date in the video you find that is not helpful, you can unsubscribe and unlike it. But if you can like and subscribe now, as I said, that'd be helpful. Now, on with the video. But this is a bit of a, 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 a mixed uh, issue here because um, the tyre size is quoted in metric as well as imperial units. So I'll just go through that with you. So this tyre is a 275-45 R20. So what does that actually mean? So the 275 refers to the width of the tyre. So that's from here to here. And that is measured in millimetres. So it's 275 millimetres wide. The 45 refers to the profile of the tyre. So what that means is really a ratio of the tyre wall versus the width. So this is a 275-45. So that what that means is that the tyre wall is 45% of the width of the tyre. So 45% of 275 is 110 millimetres. So the tyre wall is 110 millimetres um, in thickness. Next you come to the makeup of the tyre. R stands for radial, and that refers to the makeup of the tyre. You also get tyres like cross ply perhaps in years gone by, but those are less common now. And finally we come to 20, and what that refers to is the wheel size this tyre will fit. So this tyre will fit a 20 inch wheel. Right, so next we move on to the load rating and the speed rating. And that's what this figure here refers to, 110Y. So we'll split that in two. So 110 refers to the load rating, as in how much weight the tyre can actually carry when fully um, inflated. So 110, so the tyre, the load ratings start from around 75, they go up to, I think, 126. I'll put up a, a, a chart on the, on, the, on, the, on the screen now and you can check um, the different road load ratings. And so obviously the heavier the car, the higher the load rating is going to be. And Y refers to the speed rating. Now at the moment, I think the highest speed rating is Y. Uh, it, um, in years gone by, you used to get a, 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 a speed rating called Z, but that's been superseded now. Um, so the new speed ratings are put up again on, a, on, on the screen just now, and that'll give you the different speed ratings that are uh, in operation at the moment. And you can check with the speed, the speed, the max speed of your car, and you have a factor of safety on top of that, and that gives you the speed rating that you should have on your, on your, on your, on your tire. Right. Next, we come to. Um, these figures here. In this case, it says 61RM018X. Now that refers to the manufacturing plant at which the tire was made and also which batch number this is. So if, for instance, in the future there is a recall from the manufacturer that the tire was faulty, um, you can actually call a recall for a specific um, for, a, for a specific code. So therefore, if that happens, then you can check your tyre quite easily and see if the tyre is defective and if it needs to be replaced. And that's what these codes are for. And then, as we go further round, it gives you the materials on which the tyre is made up of. And then, again, we go further round and we come to this 
symbol here. This symbol here, it says T-O. Now, what that refers to is that Michelin has made this tyre specifically for Tesla, and that's what T-O stands for. If it were a BMW, for instance, it would, it would just be a star. And I put up, again, I put up a, a chart on the screen here which shows you a few of the manufacturer symbols uh, for, for specific tyres. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use this tyre on another car. You can. But, as I said, the manufacturer has made this tyre specifically for a Model X. And you can take that advice or you can't take that advice. It's entirely up to yourself. Because, as I said, there are many car man there are many tyre manufacturers. But, obviously, Tesla have have some kind of an affiliation with Michelin. So, therefore, that's why they have their code on their tyre. The next... Um, marking that we want to look at is this marking here which actually shows the maximum load that I was referring to earlier on so this one was a 110 load rating which means that the maximum load is 1060 kilos or 2337 pounds and also the maximum pressure that this tire should be inflated at when cold so the maximum pressure it says here is 50 psi now i know on a model x they recommend on a 20 inch wheel that the tire pressure should be 42 psi so but as i said it shouldn't be inflated to above 50 psi so as i said to find the tire pressures what your tire pressure should be you can either refer to there's a usually on the door jam there's a sticker and i'll show you an example of that on the screen here the sticker on the door jam that shows you the tire pressure or you might not find it on the door jam you might find it on the um the fuel filler cap but you will definitely find it inside the manual and if you can't if you don't find it in any of those three places then refer to the internet and no doubt you'll find and uh, the the correct uh, details there again right so moving on on to the next marking so the next marking is the production date of the tire. Now the production date is very important because if you go in to get a new, a new set of tires for your car, you want them to be relatively new. You don't want them to be old because if they're too old, the tires are obviously made of rubber and they will deform over time. So if you have an older tire, that's more likely to happen. So in this case, it gives you the production date of this tire and it says 1322. And what that refers to is the 13th week of 2022. So that tells you when the production date is. And also, if you go to buy, say for instance, a second hand car, and you look at the production date of the tires and they're say seven or eight years old, um, you ideally you want to change the tires because they're more likely to be, um, they're more likely to warp, they're more likely to bubble, and they're more likely to have a blowout. So therefore, the production date gives you an indication of how, gives you an exact, uh, gives you an exact time when the tire was actually produced. The next thing we're going to look at is this symbol here, which says acoustic, and that's referring to. Now, not all tires have this symbol, but that, in this case, it does, because this is referring to the foam inside the tire, and what that foam does is that it's a foam liner and what that does is it absorbs more noise than a standard tire so it keeps the car quieter as well and finally we're going to look at this word here which says outside so what that means is that this face should be the outside facing outward and the reason for that and why that's important is that tires are rotational so therefore if this is pointing on on the inside of the car it will not be as effective at dispersing water so therefore, that's the main reason that we have tread and tires, of course, to disperse the water. So if that is not facing the outside of the car, then obviously the tire is fitted incorrectly. Now the thing is, as I said earlier, the point I was trying to make, the point that can, that can potentially save you thousands of dollars, is that if you have the incorrect tires on your car and you're involved in a collision, the first thing the insurance company is going to look at before they pay out, if it's a large payout, and an assessor comes to look at your car, is that they will look out, they will look at, have you got the correct tires? Are they worn? And are they actually specified for your car? Now, if they're not, then you, they can potentially, 
not pay out their insurance claim. And therefore, you'd be out of pocket by tens of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of pounds or dollars, potentially. So therefore, it's important to have the correct tyres and educate yourself what tyres are actually specified for your car. Um, if you have a brand new car, the chances of you having the incorrect tyre are highly unlikely. But if you go to a tyre shop, there's no guarantee that they will fit the correct tyre to your car. You really have to educate yourself to make sure you have the right specification for your car and you ask for that tyre and then confirm it with them. But as I said, if you're involved in an accident and they've accidentally fitted the wrong tyres to you or given you a cheaper tyre than they perhaps they should have, they can just shrug their shoulders and say, look, this is what the customer asked for. So therefore, it's important that you know what tyres you should have. And that information, as I said, is on the label on the door check or the fuel filler cap or definitely in your manual. And if you can't find it in the manual, you can go to the manufacturer's website and they'll refer to you there. Now, in terms of wear on tyres, do cheaper tyres wear more quickly than more expensive tyres? Now, in my experience, that is not the case. Now, I've used Michelin tyres before, but nowadays I just use the value tyres, and they are generally less than half the price. And to give you an example, I just changed a set of tyres on my car, and with the premium Michelin tyres, I got 28,000 pounds, sorry, 28,000 miles of wear on these tyres. And um, the budget tyres which I used, which are half the price, I got 26,000 miles wear out of them, but they were half the price. And in terms of ratings, they were virtually the same as the Michelin tyre. In terms of their water dispersion rating and their um, rolling resistance rating were very much the same. And in the EU, and certainly in I'm sure in the USA as well, you get a tire label on each tire. And I'll put an example of that. I'll put an example of that on the screen just now. And it shows you the noise, um, how much tire how much the how much it'll show you how much noise a tire makes at I think that's at 45 kilometers an hour in decibels, the the fuel efficiency rating, and of course the water dispersion rating. And you can make your own judgment. Is it worth spending more than twice as much? or not and as I said that's just a personal opinion but um, I've apart from the original set of tires I had in my car which were obviously branded or premium the, all the rest of them have uh, have been um, a value brand and so therefore um, that's what I use now and I feel that they're just as good so anyway so that's the end of this video um, please like and subscribe especially if you learn something and share the video and um, I'll see you in the next one.